Sophia Menke is here. She is a, you're a student, let's see, student here. I'm not sure she's a, what year you are, but she's a student here at St. Anselm. And she's undecided, by the way, so there you go. I... Welcome to New Hampshire. Well, welcome back to New Hampshire. Thank you, Sophia. If you had to choose between economic reform and social reform, which one would you pursue? I love this question. So to, to me, both of these things reinforce each other in various ways. So let's say you wanted to improve educational outcomes in the United States of America, which all of us want to do. One thing you could do is invest in schools, which we should obviously do. We should pay teachers more. A good teacher is worth their weight in gold. But then when you look at the data, you find that two thirds of our kids' educational outcomes are based on non-school factors like parental income, parental time spent with them at home before they show up to school, stress levels in the household. So if you were to put money into that family and household, you would actually be enhancing that child's ability to learn when they show up to school. So the reason I point this out is that social goals often are related to economic goals, where if you put more money into families' hands, you can actually do things like improve graduation rates, improve mental health, uh, decrease domestic violence, things that we would feel very strongly about. And one thing I am confident of, New Hampshire, is that it's easier to amend and modify our capital flows in this country than it is to get into people's minds, bodies, souls, and somehow t change their attitudes about each other. Like, if we get the economics right, then I believe many of the social problems that we care so deeply about will actually change along with our balancing out an economy that's become the most extreme winner-take-all economy in the history of the world, and it's going to get more extreme as we go on unless we change it right now. And that's why I'm running for president. Look, let's talk a little bit more about the economy because there's a new poll that was out yesterday from Gallup. 63% of Americans approve of how this president, President Trump, is handling the economy. That is a high for him. How do Democrats, how do you run against that? Well, when I talk to families here in New Hampshire, they know that we have record high corporate profits right now in the United States. What else are at record highs in the United States right now? Suicides stress, anxiety, mental illness, student loan debt for those of you who are in school here, medical bankruptcies, record lows in the United States right now, starting a business for a young person, getting married, having a child. The fact is 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and almost half can't afford an unexpected $500 bill in the good times. The vast majority of the new jobs we're creating in this economy are temp, gig, or contract jobs that do not have meaningful benefits and often don't have a path forward. If you're a college graduate and you recently came out of school, there's a 40 to 44% chance you're gonna do a job that does not require a college degree. And does the school come back and say, hey, we'll forgive your loans in that case? No, of course not. So this economy, again, is the most extreme winner-take-all economy in the history of the world, and many, many Americans do not feel like they're being included in the gains. And when you ask Americans what else are at record highs in this country, we all know that all of these terrible social ills are at record highs right now, because even as the companies do better, we do not feel those gains in our own families and our own communities.